That was the topic that I found most interesting when I was a fellow, and I um, happened to have many patients with that, and I think that increased my interest in that particular um, disease. As I've um, progressed in my career, that's been the disease process that I've tended to gravitate towards. I think also the thing that influenced that is my husband is an oncologist, and so that's one place where we tend to uh, meet in terms of our interests. One of the things that um, we have found, at least in California, is that uh, cancer is uh, more common in women and um, is on the rise over time, and that's actually a national phenomenon. So if you look at thyroid cancer t statistics from 1999 to present, there are many more um, people being diagnosed with thyroid cancer. It's actually, I believe, either the eighth or tenth most common cancer. And so it, um, it does actually break the top 10, though people think that it's not as common. Um, and many people have thyroid nodules. And so when people go to be evaluated for, say, something that's perhaps unrelated, they go for a chest X-ray, or say they go to have an ultrasound of the, the veins or arteries in their neck, and oh, incidentally, you happen to have a thyroid nodule. So more thyroid nodules are being found and detected on exams that are not necessarily um, with the purpose of, of detecting that. And so then those patients will usually go and get an ultrasound and have further evaluation of that. So we're finding more and more thyroid nodules, and as such, we're finding more and more thyroid cancers over time. In general, no, um, for the vast majority of people. There are certain situations in which thyroid nodule formation is a little bit more common. So in the setting of having low iodine diet um, in um, when one is growing up, there are some countries that are a little bit more iodine deficient. The United States tends to be a pretty iodine sufficient country, so probably not the main cause in the United States. Um, there can be a family history of thyroid nodules, and we do know that for patients who have had radiation to their head or their neck, usually when they're young, say less than the age of 15, less than the age of 10, there's a higher risk for as they grow up having a thyroid nodule. But the vast majority of patients are not gonna have necessarily those exposures, and so we, we don't know for, for many patients why they develop thyroid nodules. We do know though that as people age, thyroid nodules do become more common, so it's part of the aging process as well. Usually we think about external beam radiation that someone would have gotten for a medical purpose. So if they had received radiation, say for example, for childhood lymphoma, or if they had um, a history of um, head or neck cancer and they had received radiation to their head or neck. Also for um, people who survived, uh, say natural, well natural in quotations, um, disasters involving radiation. So survivors of um, Chernobyl or uh, Fukushima, those um, people who were exposed will have a higher rate of forming thyroid nodules in the future. So really we're looking at specific types of radiation, not necessarily say, you know, doing a lot of um, air travel, you know, flying from Los Angeles to um, New York is like having a chest X-ray in terms of radiation. So, um, but we're not talking about that type of radiation generally. Oftentimes, what um, primary providers uh, will be doing is a um, just general neck exam, which is actually all that is recommended for detection of thyroid nodules. We don't recommend ultrasound screening for people because thyroid nodules are actually very common. About it's estimated that 40% of the American population has a thyroid nodule. So. Um, Generally, the patient will have a um, head or neck complaint, either pain or a lump that they've noticed or that swallowing doesn't quite feel the same. Um, perhaps they're coughing when they're swallowing or they've noticed that their voice has become more hoarse, either persistently or intermittently. And when the provider does a neck exam, if they've noticed um, on that exam that there is a asymmetry in the um, in the thyroid um, so which sits like a little bow tie over the anterior neck just above the collarbones and they may notice that there's an asymmetry or a distinct nodule or perhaps there is a lymph node that they feel that's abnormal then that patient will generally go on to have an ultrasound of their neck which is actually the best imaging study to evaluate a thyroid nodule and 
if that nodule has specific criteria that are laid out by the radiologist and the American Thyroid Association, then they will generally be referred to um, our clinic in endocrinology for further evaluation and discussion of whether or not a um, thyroid biopsy is needed to further evaluate that nodule. Because not all nodules are concerning. Some of them turn out to be cysts, and those are perfectly fine. Cysts can stay, but nodules that have concerning features would then go on for further evaluation.